I will request Professor Sharma to speak uh, for a few minutes about the ABC of higher technical education, which is one of the quite innovative uh, uh, efforts of Himachal Pradesh Technical University. Uh, Madam B. A. Thakurji, Honorable High Commissioner of India to Singapore, Mr. Ram Madhavji, Mr. Professor Thomas, Vice Chancellor, Singapore Technical University, Professor Kela Kishore, Vice Chancellor, JNPU, dignitaries, participants, and other ladies and gentlemen to this conference over here. Indeed, I am very thankful and privileged to be here among this august gathering for inviting me and sharing my thoughts with the gathering. Uh, in fact, uh, the higher education across India and across our state is also going through a considerable change because of a lot of changes are happening in the techn technical front. And as a result, our technical education is also going through a considerable change in Himachal Pradesh. Particularly, what happened is maybe because when the economy was opened in 1990 or so, a uh, lot many industries they came to India, economy grew, grew and as a result lot of jobs were created and there was a lot of demands for various type of jobs, particularly technical jobs. As a result, a large number of technical universities, technical universities they were opened across India and across the state of Himachal Pradesh also. But within a period of 10 to 15 years, what happened is those institutions they were opened, they could not keep a pace with the technology development. Only few institutions, particularly IITs, NITs, and uh, maybe few institutions within government sector, they could do it. Others could not do it. As a result, every person, every student, they want to go to only reputed institutions. And because of their limited capacity, they are not able to adjust those people. Those large number of people, because there is a large segment of middle class people who can afford, and there is a demand, but they don't want to go to other institutions. So that is how this considerable change and challenges there before us, that is how to provide quality education to last segment of the population which is there. It is not that because those institutions who could not keep pace, now they are gasping for the breath. They are not getting adequate number of students, many institutions are closing down. It is not that the demand for the quality education has gone down. There is a demand for considerable demand for quality higher education. But how to meet it, this is the challenge before us. There is a large number of universities, but if we see the international rankings of the universities, current rankings, uh, it is difficult to believe that is we are not able to find significant number of universities in, in India which are among the top 200 universities in the world. Least. Again, I don't know what are the reasons. Either we don't take it seriously, the ranking process we don't take it seriously or maybe that is we are not performing well. But I do believe that is these ranking processes and other things they have got all the benefits, maybe direct benefits, maybe indirect benefits. In direct benefit means if those rankings are there, if they are able to get those rankings, international rankings, maybe the students will get a better jobs, the prosperity will be there. And at the same time, maybe indirect type of benefits, intangible benefits which may accrue, maybe there will be a, uh, I mean, uh, considerable hope for the students and the faculty to perform better motivation for them. And if that happens, probably they will be going in the right direction. And I do hope it is not very difficult to get into those high rankings. We have to find out ways and means how to do it. 
one of the way I think is that is there is since there is a lot of changes which are happening in the technological front, particularly in the ICT area, we have, we have to use the various ICT technologies to deliver quality education to our students. Some of the universities are doing because now there are a large number of technological breakthroughs, large number of technological modules which are available and our students can use it. This year itself, uh, I think uh, the number of internet users in India that will cross I think 250 million and same will be the status or same will be the trend <coughs> in the case of iPad and other things. So I think if this is the number of users of these technologies they can use and if they are provided this type of modules through which the universities and other institutions can provide technical education, maybe at their doorstep, maybe at their homes, need not to come to the class. Only what the universities has to do is they have to manage, they have to provide the logins and deliver the quality education to the students. So that is in fact where we are putting our efforts, that is how this can be done, how we can improve and I think if we can do a little bit, I think this will be a great service to our students and our country also. If we look on the other side, if we look on the socio-economic side, if we look on the status of our last segment of the population, I think they need a lot of innovations. They want some positive change in their lives. And it is the role of the higher education, universities and institutions to bring innovations, to give a thrust to the research which can bring a positive change in the life of the people. I am thankful to India Watch for providing me this opportunity to share my little thoughts with you people and maybe we, when we will be interacting with so many dignitaries over here, I think we will learn much more. I am grateful to be in association with Engineering Watch and I hope we will learn a lot and we will be able to deliver. Thank you very much.